recording is in progress and we are going live. We are going on. Welcome to the SDEBA Power Lunch. Can I get a big hey from everyone? Hey. Hey. hey! hey! Glad to have you here for our monthly get together. I am your host, Milo Shapiro, the author of Public Speaking Get A's Not C's. And this is the San Diego Equality Business Association. Start my video. Yes, I would like to start my video. There I am, I hope. Uh, so we are the Chamber of Commerce for the LGBT plus community and its allies. We love seeing our allies supporting us as we support each other. Uh, we are here in August with all these incredible holidays, but you didn't even know August was this full of holidays. So happy uh, play in the sand day. I don't know who is promoting that sandbox makers everywhere had to get that on the calendar, but it is a legal thing apparently. And, and of course, National Peach Month, which we've all been celebrating with our for me, it's all about tomatoes right now. Uh, please do go ahead and mute yourself now as we move into the program. Windows all day, Mac, ship command A, or the little button in the bottom corner. And turn on the chat because people may want to ask you something about something you say or something they heard from you. So that makes it easier. It could be under the more if you're on a small screen. Likewise, turn on the participants window. I'll explain why in a little while. We are going to be putting this video on YouTube because I've already had a number of people say to me, this topic sounds really interesting and I'm not free at noon on Wednesday, but I want to hear what gets said. So uh, just know that we will be sharing this on our website and on the website for this group, power-lunch.com. It's going to look something like this on our Facebook page as well. Tonight's sponsor is Oseas Villatora with his line of clothing on at his store over in, uh, in Hillcrest, kind of where normal and university meet. So whether you're looking for a fun t-shirt or some fancy pants or some great shorts, uh, he's Dorian's partner who's on the call and one of our board members. So we're happy to be promoting his business. So you can check him out at his website, oseasv.com. If you'd like to be a sponsor of a future month, let us know at info at sdeba.org, an address I'll be saying a whole bunch of times at this call. It's the best way to get in touch with us for any issue. Helping us out today, we have most of these people. We've got Jeremy Wilson, our president. Brenda couldn't be here today. Uh, CJ is helping let people in and out of the place. Dorian is here, no garrison today. And our board, we have uh, a number of people from our board here today. Uh, not everyone, but notice those blue squares. There is room for you if you are a member or a potential member and would say, I'd love to help make this organization get where it wants to be and, and be more productive and create more for everybody. Terrific. We'd love to have your support. Be someone in one of the blue spots. Uh, our organization, what does it stand for? I'm going to ask CJ, our tech person today, if he would give our mission statement. Absolutely. The San Diego Equality Business Association promotes LGBTQ influence through business ownership, workforce equality, and active consumerism, creating prosperity to support equality, diversity, and inclusion. Terrific. Moving on, being a member has its benefits. You definitely get to be mentioned on, on our website. I'm going to try and get these controls off my screen so I can see as much as you. There we go. Uh, so you, you can see if I search for Realtor, I would come up with these three listings. And if I clicked on one of them after that... It might show up looking like this for Tamaris Records. So it tells you all about the person, where to find her, how to reach her. It's a great way to know. I know when I'm looking for services, the first place I go is SDEBA to see if there's somebody there who already provides that service for us. You also get the, the app as part of your membership, which allows you to connect with people and learn more about what we're up to. Things we do is educational sessions, social events, a job board. We allow for advertising and even some free posting ops to talk about your business. You get free membership in a BNG, which we'll talk about in a few minutes, a business networking group. You're allowed to use the SDEBA logo in your materials to show people that this is something you support and that you're a part of. And we have mixers, or at least we had a great mixer. We had a terrific mixer over Inside Out. Uh, Jeremy, how many people would you say were there? I I'm guessing 60, 70? Um, so. Oh, you went, uh, you went blank on it. I heard, and so. Oh, sorry. Um, we had 150 registered. Oh, we had over 100 show up. That's terrific. That's why I'm not good at the how many jelly beans are in the jar game. So I, I, it's 100 people. That was terrific. Right now, though, it looks like we're not going to be planning anything for a little while longer because COVID is having everybody who will be in that picture have masks on. There is me getting food. That's what I can always find myself doing at almost any mixer. Todd Gloria down a little bit lower there, our mayor who showed up. So we will get back to mixers when we can. But for now, the Power Lunch is another way to continue to be in touch with the people who are in your organization. And we've extended it through at least December, probably into next year. We'll see what happens. So we'll be looking more like this than like in person, at least on the Power Lunches. 
So what is today about? It's to give you a chance to share what you do with the largest section of the SDEA community and guests, give you a chance to learn about what others offer in our community to support them, provide education when we can to ver in various areas, and it helps grow the SDEA family as people come and get to meet each other and connect offline, which is what we really hope is that you're using this to find other people to get to know one-on-one -on -one as well. This isn't exclusive by industry, so we could potentially have people who overlap here, and that's totally okay. Get to know them both, see if one is a better fit. Uh, we don't get to learn about each other intimately. We're having 30 seconds to talk. It's enough to make, so the goal is to intrigue someone to learn more about you. It's not a replacement for the business networking groups where those groups get together once so we can really get to know their businesses intimately. Tamara's in my group, Dorian's in my group. I can tell you so much more about insurance or real estate than I ever could have before getting to hear from them on a weekly basis. It's not a commitment. If you can't make it this week because you've got a client or something big, then that's what you should be dealing with. But any second Wednesday of the month that you don't have that, we hope you'll be with us here. And it's not a place to sell to us. This is about making connections and creating a larger outlook so that people have the chance to tell other people about you. Like many of you know, I have the side business as a photo person. If you catch someone else who's complaining about their picture, that's worth more to me than if you have a picture. Who do we welcome? We welcome SDBA members, of course, and any guests who want to be here. We're not only have we extended the program through the end of the year, but we're keeping it free through at least the end of the year. So this is more than a member benefit. It's a way of getting people to learn who we are and what we're about. So we're, we appreciate the board approving this through the end of the year. Our meeting format is, I will continue this introduction, this opening rather. We'll get to our member introductions. We all have 30 seconds to talk about your business. That is not our guest, I missed the slide. So Ashley won't be with us. Smiling at the top of my box there is Hallie, who will be our guest today. You'll learn more about her a little later. We'll talk about any upcoming events and announcements we need to make, if there are any, and we'll have our official closing at one o'clock. Uh, Hallie has agreed though that she'll linger a little after that if anyone has Q&A. So we can take that time then. Sometimes, uh, there it is, sometimes there's an extended Q&A. But how do you know when it's your turn to speak up? Well, in the participants window that I asked you to open up, you'll see that the people are listed somewhat alphabetically. At the top is the few people who are listed as, as leaders in the group, and then it goes alphabetically from there. So that way you kind of know if you're on deck. When you hear me say your name, that's the right time to unmute. If you do it anticipating it, you'll shoot to the top of the list and I'll miss you. So wait till you hear your name, then unmute yourself. Uh, you can share about yourself just orally, or if you want to use your 30 seconds to screen share, you're welcome to. But if it's the first time you've ever done that, this probably isn't the best place to try and learn because that can take more than 30 seconds. After you're done, please remute and unshare if need be. And finally, when you're done talking and the next person starting, it's a great chance to share your big five, your name, your website, your phone, your email, your LinkedIn, or anything else you think we need to know to uh, be able to be more in contact with you. Keeping us on time today, we have Barbara stepping in for our regular timer who couldn't be here this week. Thank you so much, Barbara, for being willing. So Barbara, why don't you tell us a little bit about the signals and how it's going to work? If you're not unmuted, please unmute. Now I can unmute. There we are. There you go. Uh, well, you you know, this is my, my first time in, in the timekeeping aspect. So I just want to tell everybody with the 30 seconds, I will share in your, uh, at 20 seconds, I will share a yellow card so that you can um, know that you've got only 10 seconds left. At 25 seconds, you're going to see the red card. And then, you know, once you have that, uh, I'm either going to say thank you, <laughs> and hopefully you will then mute your mute your uh, self again so that the next person can, can be invited on. Don't forget to put your information at the bottom in the chat room, and uh, we'll go from there. Well I, done. As we tested it. As we tested it, her yellow looked a little white. So if you see Barbara holding up a white card, it's your yellow card. <laughs> it's just the way her <laughs> webcam is picking up the color a little bit. So away we go. We're going to start at the top of this. I am going to get out of screen share mode so that I can actually see the participant window because it doesn't work well at the same time I've learned over time. So stretching it, participants. There we go. So CJ, why don't you kick us off by telling us a little bit more about your services? Absolutely. Hello, everyone. My name is CJ Gilbert. I've been a website developer for over 25 years. I'm now also a speaker and author, and I love sharing free resources and information with the community. I'm going to drop in just a minute the link to my SDEBA resource page so you can especially make it to my free video workshop, learn how to make your website work for you, and then my podcast, Ask a Web Geek. I'm going to be also sharing links to my two YouTube channels. Please subscribe. I'm looking for subscribers, share, and I 
I thank you so much. My name is CJ Gilbert. We understand the internet is a jungle. Arr, it sure is. Yes. I learned so much from those LinkedIn videos. I really recommend them highly. Uh, Jeremy, anything you'd like to share? Sure. Um, good afternoon, everyone. Um, Barbara, I typically go a little bit more than 30, 45 seconds. So. Yes, that is president. Yes. <laughs> and, I, and, I, and I believe with our crowd, we may have a little bit more time. Okay. Uh, <laughs> so uh, welcome everyone. As Milo was saying, our last event was a um, big success last month. Um, we typically do see a little bit of drop off from engagement after we all get together for one of our big signature events. Um, so anyways, I uh, just wanted to say hi to everyone. Uh, go to sdba.org. Um, ask me if you have any questions about our organization. Uh, we are going to be um, probably restarting a few virtual events as Delta continues. Um, although we may do something hybrid where we have, you know, cameras going and so people can join either virtually or in person, maybe outside, we're still thinking how this is going to play out because we do want to keep everyone safe uh, with what's going on out there. So again, my name is Jeremy Wilson, president of this organization for the past two and a half years, honored to lead it and uh, welcome everyone. Thanks so much. Um, next up in my list, I see Barbara. Would you like to talk about yourself, not just time? <laughs> I'm Barbara Eldridge. I'm founder and coordinator of an organization called Mind Masters. We support the small business owners, service business owners on a weekly basis in groups. Uh, we invite people so that they have the focus and the accountability to accomplish their goals. And people are invited to visit our groups and uh, just check out with my information at the bottom. There you go. It's terrific. Wonderful place to actually be able to have a feeling of a business family supporting you in my masters. Uh, I'm not sure who D. Smith is, so I'm hoping that, that she'll unmute or he'll unmute or they'll unmute and, uh, and tell us who they are. D. Smith, can you hear me? There you go. Yes, I can hear you. And you're, you're entitled to your 30 seconds. Tell us a little bit about you and your business. Um, so um, my name is Darren. Um, I'm a, a veteran Coast Guard, eight years, law enforcement for 14 years. Um, I have a uniform company. We sell mostly to public safety and military, um, but we do have uniforms for medical, uh, hotel industry. We sell uniforms to Caesars Casinos um, and a few others, rider trucking companies and movie shoots. So thank you, um, thank you, anything. Lee. Yeah, thank yeah. You. So yeah, uniforms first... mostly, but outdoor adventure stuff too. Thank sure. you, Darren. It's your first time here, right? It is. I thought it was your first uh, a new name to be well welcome. Um, I'm glad Thank you, know, you. continue to come. Up next, we have Debbie Craw. Debbie, introduce yourself and tell us what you do. And I have a lead for you, by the way. Hi, my name I is Debbie. My name is Debbie Croft, and I'm a proofreader and copy editor, and I help uh, mainly business people perfect their content, whether it's websites or PowerPoints or proposals or any kind of business and marketing communications. And um, it's great to be with you all here today. Thank you. Thanks. I just found someone who finished a book and she needs a proofreader. So I'm going to give her your information. That's it. How it works. All right. Dorian Brewer, open up for us. Hey, hello. Afternoon, everybody. Dorian Brewer, State Farm Insurance. So do you want to know how you're covered, why you're covered? Well, maybe why you're, um, maybe covered you need. Uh, you talk to me. I'm happy to evaluate any insurance you have. Milo can testify that I can tell you, you know what? You're actually pretty good. Um, so I have a very soft sales approach. Um, yeah, worked from the bottom to the top. Uh, years ago, started as a team member. Now I'm my own agent. I'm happy to work, support the LGBTQ community. Dorian Brewer, State Farm Insurance. I love so driving past and after all of these years, seeing that big sign in Texas and El Cajon where you are always makes me feel good. Uh, Hallie has said that she wants to just save her time for when we do the interview. So we're going to go past her and jump over to Margo Garcia. Hi, Margo Garcia. I founded Great Leader Coaching to help good managers become great leaders. I also speak on the topic of busy is the new lazy. And she will be speaking on that at our October meeting, in fact. Yay! Little yay. tip off there. Okay. And down, jumping from the all the way down to the T's, we have Tamara Z. Good afternoon, everybody. Tamara Z with Coldwell Banker West, formerly Ascent Real Estate. I've been a member of uh, this group for, I guess it's been almost 18 years now. And uh, always a pleasure to be a part of these um, presentations. Milo, thank you for hosting. 
Glad to have you here. <laughs> Most knowledgeable agent you're gonna come across. And I guess I can say that since there aren't any other agents here. Uh, so I'm gonna go back for my, actually, get, uh, Jeremy, do you wanna say a little bit about the BNGs before I take my turn? So um, business networking groups um, are a intimate group that meet weekly or bi-weekly. And what the purpose of the group is, is to represent your chosen profession. And it is a sole uh, representation. So that means that um, if Tamara is the real estate agent, there are no other real estate agents in that BNG. And then um, over the years, these groups get to know each other very well and provide a huge source of leads and referrals. I can attest having been a BNG facilitator and being part of a BNG for collectively over eight years that I still get tips and referrals from being in that BNG, um, even though I had to withdraw from mine over a year and a half ago. So we are coming out with a survey in the very near future and to pull our members to see if perhaps additional time slots and virtual BNGs may be something that we um, could start putting together for the remainder of the year. So be on the lookout for a BNG survey to be coming out your way, especially for those newer members. We've had 45 members join in the last 12 months. And uh, for those members that aren't already in a BNG. Thanks, Myra. That is so true about that lasting impression. Even when people have left, I've referred people to people who used to be in our BNG. Mm -hmm. um, our solo person left. If I met her at a networking event, it would have been in one ear and out the other. But even though she's not mm -hmm. with us now, I've met her so many times that now that we're putting solar on the house, we hope uh, she's the person who's going to be doing it because it made that impression. So heading over to do my turn, I'm going to do a quick screen share, get things going back on with the screen. Hopefully you're seeing that woman. Uh, I am my Spiro, public speaking coach. And one aspect besides helping people give presentations and speak generally better is that I'm doing a new program called business advantage where people like that woman talking into the screen for several minutes is probably not her best way to make a video so what i'm doing is i'm interviewing people kind of like on this show but shorter and tighter with questions we work out in advance so you have something that really looks good and makes you look like you were guested on a show i become your little oprah clip so if you know someone who may not speak so great right into the camera talking about their business but would make a great guest it's a really okay. inexpensive way to create that video check it out at businessadvantage.xyz and I couldn't see you if you were holding up the card because I was too busy screen sharing. Sorry about that. So actually, I do have the screen. You share. did okay. You did almost okay. But close. Thanks. Yeah, Sorry, it's a little good. hard for people to fit everything at once. CJ can tell you that. I've seen him do it. He's he's a pro. So going back to that, to go on to the next slide, and now our guest. Our oh, that's right. I have to remember. I always have that slide up. I have to turn off my screen share because I don't want that to override anything. Go to see her. So my guest today, Hallie Lorenzato, is an ESC adjunct professor and the author of the upcoming books, If I Were You, Finding Common Ground Through Empathy, and its companion piece, the If I Were You workbook, Exercises in Empathy Building. She offers classes to groups wanting to work on empathy both between peers and with the people they work with out in the world, such as police officers and citizens. Her master's thesis focused on empathy in today's society, Hallie, welcome to the Power Lunch. Glad to have you here. Thank you. Thank you. Glad to be here. All right. So one question I know we've talked about, I want to use it as a kind of a kickoff point. What is the difference and what is the same with the word empathy and sympathy? Because I think they get really mixed. Yeah. Um, empathy, sympathy, and compassion are all kind of along the spectrum of how we interact with other people in relationship or in newborn relationship that you are where you first see someone or experience someone. Um, the difference is uh, I use the words sympathy, compassion, and empathy. Um, there's a book out recently um, by a neuroscientist from Stanford named Jamil Zaki, who says that the, um, that the, the world of psychology and neuropsychology uses these terms. Cognitive empathy, which is the same thing as sympathy. Motivational, which is the same thing as compassion and emotional empathy. And the way, they, the way he splits it up is the same way I do. Cognitive means you're thinking, you're thinking about. So when you are sympathetic to someone, you think about their situation. Like, oh, your, your uh, friend just passed away. That 
is horrible. I think that that is a horrible situation for you. So I am voicing that I think that is horrible um, and a sad thing for you. Um, compassion is motivational or caring, meaning, oh, I'm so sorry that your um, friend passed away. Can I bring some food to you? Can I do anything for you? Can I help make that better? It's that, it's that kind of intuitive prompting inside to do something about it, to care about it, rather than just to observe and know it and register it. And then the third one that they use is emotional empathy, which is what I just call empathy, which is where you actually have an experiential understanding. You're actually kind of putting yourself in someone else's shoes and having some of the same visceral responses that that person may be going through. That is taking it to another level. I was trying to think whether we should be calling sympathy cards empathy cards because we all lost someone, but maybe we're not actually working to the point of putting ourselves in, in there. Yeah, I'm not sure everybody wants to feel what it feels like when someone's a uh, great person has passed away. Uh, I mean, I think you, empathy has its own price. You kind of want to, you want to use it, but there's times when you don't necessarily want to make that jump. Um, but sympathy and compassion are lovely too. So <laughs> have their places. I guess I'm not prejudiced. It's all good. So the fact that you actually built your master's work around empathy, why is it that you feel that we should care as much about empathy, so much about empathy? Well, my master's was in public diplomacy at USC, and I, I did gear all of the studies around public diplomacy towards empathy. Public diplomacy is how um, the peoples of a nation view the other peoples of a nation, not necessarily the political leaders, but how do we think of the French, how do the you know, Japanese think of us, that kind of thing, and taking action to, to uh, create stronger bonds between the peoples of nations so that even when things go off the rails in the politics, that doesn't carry the whole you know, anger and things from the whole public at the same time. That's what public diplomacy is. And I started studying the, the role of empathy in that, like do people... Um, how do the actions of one nation um, affect the understanding uh, of another nation about those people or, or us about another nation? So um, in the end, what, it, what empathy does is it extends our belonging, our, our element of belonging. It, it just extends beyond just the people we know, or it, you can have empathy with the person you know, but beyond that, one of the things it does is it extends our sense of belonging to larger groups so that we can then sympathize, have compassion, and even, um, even imagine what someone else is going through. So when, when a tsunami happens, uh, Americans are well known for jumping in when there's a crisis, right? Part of that is just, oh, that's too bad. But then the compassion comes in of, oh, I wanna help. But then there's a lot of people who then go, oh my God, what might th must they be going through right now? And that, creates a bigger bond and a greater willingness to help. That's one of the, that's kind of the glo one of the global elements. In personal existence and personal life, empathy is really great because we can um, step into what we think someone else might be doing. And that can give us uh, an ability to add to our perspective, another perspective of someone else and make us maybe not jump to the conclusions of how we think things are going on, but step further into how someone else might be seeing something um, that might be different from us. And it can avoid conflict. It can get people closer to each other. It can, um, in a really positive way, empathy can create role models because you can step into, oh, what would it be like to be a rock star on stage? I, oh, I can feel what that feels like. I'm going to go do the things it takes to go be that because that's what I want to be. So it's, it's part of role modeling as well, empathy. So I know you talk about it kind of separately about how do we use it personally and how we use it in society globally. So that seems like be one example as a, as a way of inspiring ourselves to use empathy. How else do you see it serving us personally? Personally. Well, personally, it, it keeps miscommunications at a, at a lower level so that people, who, people often get angry at each other because they don't understand that not everybody looks at the world the way they do. Um, we all think somehow that our perspective on the world is the correct one or the informed one or whatever that is that we think, uh, our ego thinks. And a lot of times um, you can become much deeper in relationship with people and, and, and enjoy their uniqueness as well as have fewer un, un misunderstandings if you can stop and say, oh, 
I'm seeing it this way, but how is someone else seeing it? I think the moment this happened with me was when I really got this was I was heading to a, a perfume counter to buy my mother a, a birthday present. And my father was with me and there was a counter right in, in front of us that we would have to go right or left to get. And the other one was behind it. Oh, my fingers oh, behind it. And um, my father went one way. I went the other and he said, no, come here this way. And all of a sudden I went, I'm fine. I'll meet you there. It, it kind of dawned on me. Oh, we have paths that are equal distance and he wants to go that way. I want to go this way, but then there's nothing wrong with that. We'll both get to the right place, you know? And so I, I see that when, when things are, when I'm kind of, no, why aren't they seeing it my way? A lot of times I can go, okay, wait a minute. There are different paths. Let's see. And we don't, don't always arrive at the same place, but even that difference of where we arrive can be really interesting. I love that idea. And I've seen that play out in my life in other ways and how different people handle conflicts and it's not it's not what's working for me and then I have to stop and go this is actually working for them and maybe if I let them take their path I'll end up happier than if I keep doing what your father was doing trying to pull you in right how about within society and globally how do you, you see applying empathy because that seems like a, like a hard thing to imagine to get enough people to empathize to make that happen yeah I mean right now there's so much um bitterness between groups. There's so much tribalism. Um, empathy started, the, the study of empathy and the understanding of empathy started when the scientists uh, discovered the, the um, motor neuron, the neurons that, that they, they were doing an experiment with a chimp and they discovered that the chimp could, the mirror neuron, I'm sorry, the mirror, mirror neuron, I didn't know I was saying that wrong. Um, and, and they discovered that um, the behavior of the chimp he could, the, the chimp could actually see what someone else's, uh, see what the person was doing and realize that that banana actually is a thing to unpeel and do it because he saw some, someone else do it. He saw the researcher do it. And they, and they realized that they could, they could put themselves in the, in the place of someone else and do the thing that the other one was doing. Um, and they studied the neurons and they discovered this mirror neuron, which makes us mirror other people's behavior. Um, and uh, that ability to mirror other people's behavior became, as you grow, um, becomes form, a form of empathy. You start as a, as a baby and, and the only way you can learn how to walk, speak and do that is, is to mirror other people. And you become close to that person and you start to understand that person. As you get older, um, your family becomes the people and your friends become that. The same thing can happen um, to, when you sense that someone is like you, you tend to empathize with them. You find the common ground and you tend to empathize with them. The more that you enlarge your group of who you can do that with, uh, historically it became uh, you know, cousins and all of that, maybe then your religious, the people who believe the same way you do, and then your, then your town, then your state, then your nation, then maybe some other people in the world. So it, it became a, a reaching out form that lets people get along better. Tribalism kind of pulls you back in and says, oh no, I wear black clothes and you wear white clothes. I wear, you know, I have whatever and you have another thing and it shuts it back down again. So right now, particularly in globally and societally, the ability to go back and find those common ground places and sit with each other and discover those and then slowly find ways to still be part of a tribe together without the hostility of the other and the alien um, is really important right now. So it's really important both in the, our, our society right now and then if we're lucky can go uh, all the way around the world for people to understand each other. It can avoid fights that can actually globally become wars um, if people can just get other people's point of view and I mean, it's not as simple as that. There's all kinds of things involved in it, but um, it is very important in our world in order to survive from now on, to have a sense of something, other points of view rather than our own. This, this is kind of a two-part question that came out of something you just said. Can, can empathy be increased and kind of tied into that? Is it something... Like, like a talent, like some people are more naturally empathetic and some people aren't, does that limit them? Or can everybody get to the same place? Now, up until recently, 
up until recently, scientists really thought it was it was a, a trait that you were born with, like your height, where whatever height you were going to get to or whatever all of that is. Um, and so they pretty much saw it as a fixed thing. But uh, clearly with, you know, brain plasticity and with all of and with more research, they've discovered, yes, absolutely, it can be increased, which is why it's worth talking about, because we can all gain in our ability to do it. Um, the main things that create that um, are your ability to pay attention to other people, your willingness to recognize that people have different points of view, your ability to imagine and have an emotional response in your imagination to what someone else may be going through, um, and, and your curiosity level, a real curiosity level. I mean, I, um, I've, uh, as I've, I'm a professional actor and I've heard many times with new actors when they're, when they're performing things, they, uh, they end up admitting at some point that they're really kind of waiting for the other person's lines to finish so that they can say their lines, which In is, there. which, yeah, which we've all done. Um, and, um, so that's uh, that's not real curiosity. Uh, if we do that in real life, that's that's not taking in someone else's stuff. So the opposite of that would be really opening and wondering in real ways how someone sees something differently from the way you see it. Um, and really, when you ask the question, really taking in the answer uh, to any question you ask. But even if you don't ask a question, just by paying attention to other people and how they are seeing things, you increase your empathy. But also when you add to that, the ability to, um, to imagine yourself in their situation, um, that definitely teaches it and increases, enhances your ability to be empathetic. It sounds like it's both quantitative and qualitative as you were explaining that, that you can remember to do it more often or when you're doing it, you can remember to go deeper in, in getting it. So I, I think anyone can say I could try to remember to do it more often, but the ability to go deeper in how doing it, that, that sounds like it's more of a learned skill, or maybe again, for some people, that's an easier thing to do. Um, I think that, I think it's, it's, in, it's in how much, it's in learning skills and it's in how much you actually are willing to get that uh, maybe the person's point of view is not one you like very much. And empathy, I will emphasize, empathy is not agreements. Empathy is not that you are listening to someone and going, yeah, I, I agree with you. I, you know, I like what you're saying. You can, as an actor, I've learned many, many times, I've stepped into roles that were egregious. The characters were doing egregious things. And in order to play the role, I can't be deciding that they're so egregious, I can't go there. I mean, so it's, Empathy is empathy is is wonderful. It 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 takes something if you go deep. You could it's it's great to in, in, increase it so that you get along with people. You understand people. It's it's wonderful. You add the a tapestry of in from the world that you would never do otherwise. Like the the musics and the 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 lives of other people that are not your experience get added, and you have a much wider worldview and more experience. But if you want to go into the deeper levels of empathy. You have to be willing to feel things that you don't normally feel, um, and or maybe want to, and maybe you want to feel. Maybe I mean that's a, one of the reasons to do it. The other reason is to have compassion for people who have gone through those things. If you actually sense it and step yourself in and actually feel it, you get what someone may have gone through, to a degree. Also, you're guessing. You're always guessing. No one can absolutely know what anybody else has gone through. Whatever they is getting empathy wrong worse than not doing it at all well no because curiosity saves you from that because you get to ask you don't assume you don't go oh because that person looks like that and walks and moves like that and says something like that that this is who they are you 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 spend a little more time if you want deeper you spend a little more time asking real questions getting real answers and always keep in the back of your mind i'm doing my best to understand this I can't, I haven't had their experience. I didn't grow up the way they grew up. I didn't have the influences they have. And I, I'm not treated the way they are treated in the world, anybody different. Um, so I'm never gonna get it exactly, but I'm happy to have a better sense of it. And that makes my world bigger and it makes me um, more inclusive. And it isn't tolerance. It's, you know, when they talk about being more tolerant, it's, it's a celebration really of the fact that everybody, we're not all the same. Like tolerance so, is like the first step and then say, okay, that's not enough. 
Well, it can be the first step if you're intolerant. If you're not, if you're not intolerant, to begin with, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I guess tolerance of people having an opposite opinion to yours. I think that's where tolerance comes in first. Like, if someone's polar opposite in their opinion, to me, my first response to that is, oh, why? Why? What? How do you see that? Most people's response is, yeah, right. You know, fine. You don't know what I know. You know, and so if you jump to that second one, you're not gonna experience the depth of empathy and you're probably, you may not experience getting very broad with your empathy either. So um, I, I just wanna say one thing about the broad and the, the depth and the broad. I, it, it took me a while to kind of figure out like these, a person is empathetic, um, but they're a terrible person. Like they do terrible things out in the world, but they're great to their family. I mean, Adolf Hitler was probably great to his family, right? Um, maybe not, but who knows? Um, Somebody who's like that can be great to the people who are close to them and just really a, 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 not a gift to, to the planet mostly. So how can that be? Can they be, would they be considered an empathetic person if they are able to like understand what's going on with someone close to them, but not the other? And I, I believe, I see those two kinds of empathy with even with the emotional empathy. And to me, one is the people who are capable of loving their family and their friends. and putting their hearts open and hearing them and understanding what they're going through. And then, but no one else, but nobody else. That's as much energy as they're willing to put out or can put out at that, at any given point. And then there's a, there's, and they can go deeply with one person or with whatever. It's a bigger challenge to have empathy for a greater, broader collection of people who are unlike you. And then to have deep empathy about that is even harder. Um, in that book by, uh, that uh, Jamil Zaki did, he talks about acting is the greatest um, grower of empathy, the, the profession of acting or the, um, the hobby of acting. Stepping into someone else's shoes as an actor is, it can teach um, empathy better than anything else. Also not kind of running a, a close second is reading or writing and creating character or under, or being open to how a different character thinks and feels and does things. Um, those things help build empathy um, from the start. And that can be, and there you have some, some choice as to how wide that sphere or that, or that circle is that you want to do that with in terms of how different other people can be. I have a niece who's trying to read a book from every country in the world right now. She's in her twenties and she wants to read a book that was written, of course, translated into English, but written <laughs> from every country in the world. You know, it's interesting to, that's, a, I'd never heard of anybody doing that before, but that's someone who wants to understand uh, a much wider group and then and hopefully has some empathy for the people who uh, live those very different lives. Pretty cool. And film too. Yeah, that's really interesting. Yeah. Sometimes more digestible for people than having yeah. to face a book. Yeah, film is really great too, although you have to bring yourself to the film rather than sitting back and just letting it happen at you too. So it's important for, for growing empathy, it's important to let your imagination really go with with whatever you're watching. Cause I, you know, it, and it depends on the film. If it's kind of a Marvel comic film, probably less so than some other ones. So. Yeah, probably. <laughs> yeah, yeah, probably. I'm not saying you couldn't empathize with Marvel comic, maybe you can. Just saw a film this week that I'm recommending to everyone. It's along those lines, it's not a tangent, uh, called Escape from Mogabishu, I think it was called. And it's a Korean film. And because it involves North and South Koreans in another country, having to empathize with all three different cultures and why they're reacting to each of the people. It's a real eye opener. It's a fascinating film. Great. Uh, one I'm of the things I wondered in all of what you were saying about the different degrees is is, is empathy measurable? Um, no, so. <laughs> <laughs> not really. No, I mean maybe it will be. Uh, as the, there's a lot of neuroscientists studying this right now, doing brain things, you know, figuring out what fires and what doesn't, and how much and all that. But at the at this point, it's not measurable. Um, but you can tell when it's lacking. Um, you can tell when it's lacking. You can tell by, you know, the lack of understanding between people. You can tell if it, uh, I mean, at, at its extreme, if there's someone is a sociopath, they, I don't know whether it's chemical or, you know, other forms of physiologically or, or environmentally unable to, uh, that's kind of a big part of being a sociopath, this complete inability to imagine outside of your own point of view. 
Um, so narcissistic, same thing, the narcissistic personality disorder, they have a hard time um, getting what that anybody else sees it differently. Um, so those things are, make show that it's lacking. But in, and and behaviorally, you can tell when you know by people's choices of what they how they talk about things, how much they can listen to things, how how much they're curious and ready to find out new things about other people. And I mean, you can. T I don't know if that can tell empathy completely, but how they respond to the new information is you can you know some of their behavior can show empathy, but to actually measure it, not so much. I, I, one of the ways I know that I get myself in trouble is the places I can often look back and go, there was a place where I wasn't empathetic. Just this week, I had an argument with someone, and one of the things that came out was, how could you have not known how cold that sounded when you said that? I was like, it didn't sound cold in my mind. So if I want to increase my own empathy, what are a few things that I can do? Okay. Um, one of the things is to uh, role play things, <laughs> to be an actor. That helps. Um, observation curiosity and imagination are the three biggest elements to being empathetic. So if you see someone's jaw tighten at the moment that you just said something, observe it. I, I'm a big believer in, in uh, conflict resolution and that kind of thing in taking a second to back off when stuff happens. You know, I think that going forward and continuing, uh, but you can only do you can only know when to do that if you even when you're in the midst of your thing if you continue to observe what is landing um, on other people so um but all in all empathy is uh, uh is seeing people and hearing people from where they really are not from where you imagine them or where they should be in your in your estimation um and then if you don't understand what just happened if you see the jaw clench and you're like eh, that's weird i didn't do that that's a moment to just go, oh, wait a minute. Um, just curious. Was something I just said, did that affect you in some way? You know, was there something I just said that did that? It's hard to do that if you're in the middle of an argument because then you're arguing and people want their own thing. But in that middle of the argument, it's the time to step back and go, wait a minute. Um, this isn't going to get us anywhere. Let's ask a couple questions instead. Let's just ask a couple questions, real questions, not the kind of questions you already have the answer for for them. But I can't think of one off offhand, but you know, um, you like it that way, don't you? You know, whatever it is, you know, that's if you think Why are you, you know being the answer. So stupid. Yeah, exactly. Well, that's a, that's a helpful one for a fight. Yeah, don't. No, don't do that one. Um, yeah, but um, it's always a good stopping fights. It's always is true. Curiosity is a great tool for stopping fights and for building empathy in general. Really good thing. I. As I think in terms of empathy, a flashback to what you said about, you know, when someone dies, you may not want to take yourself to their grieving place just to express sympathy. So is there a place where you can be too empathetic? And how do we how do we keep boundaries while still being empathetic? Yeah, I mean, once you've built empathy into your personality um, and you kind of it automatically kind of triggers for for things like, oh, I'm really like I can't. I do massage on people sometimes. And if there's someone in pain in a public setting, if I see someone going to pain, I was like, are you hurt? Are you in pain? Sit down, I'll help you. I mean, I, I, the first thing that happens is I jump there, right? So if you've already got that going, then you may have to kind of back it off sometimes. First of all, I, I always ask, I don't attack people with my massages, but, um, but also there are professions that where you have to keep boundaries. Um, a lot of medical professions, especially right now, um, you, it's really important for your own health and, and sanity to be able to stop being empathetic with someone, stop standing in their shoes, stop knowing what it's like to be losing four members of your family from COVID, stop you know, seeing a person not being, only being able to wave at their family right before they die, those kind of things and much lighter things than that. That's like the most severe. But um, yes, like an actor, you don't want to be taken by, overtaken by your psychopath, psychopathic role that you're playing. <laughs> you have to be able to step back out of it. Um, thought stopping is really helpful with that. When you start going, you just have to go up, oh, change the thought I'm going to think about. And you can, if, if you're in a situation where empathy is really overwhelming you, you can, you can have a plan for yourself in your life in general, if, if you tend to empathize too much, have a color. For me, it's a color. 
I have a color. I automatically, because there's no emotional content for me in a color. I'm not going to associate it. I, I choose colors that I'm not going to associate to something else. So all of a sudden, if things are coming too much, I will think of a blank wall that is X color. It changes in the moment what color that is, a blue wall, a green wall, or whatever. Um, and um, so that is, you know, for me, that's it. But you can, you can have anything that you want to have jump in front of you. A, a an item, a something, a thing of music, anything you want that that you just call on when you can sense yourself going, you call on that thing, and that piece of music comes in your mind, and then you focus on that for the moment and get yourself back into yourself that where you're not falling because it, it's a sense of falling um, into something too deeply. So you pull yourself back and um, and pull yourself together again. Wow. So a couple of wrapping questions I want to do. How are you applying this in business? Let us know what it is you do. Um, I am uh, I'm I'm doing webinars on how to um, actually embody the idea of putting uh, of going from looking at your own point of view and really kind of understanding where you come from, imagining what it's like to be someone else, and then um, learning how to step into other people's shoes with acting is is what I'm doing with the workshops. I'm also I I also delineate. Um, a special workshop for leadership. I think someone, someone here is also Margo does leadership, leadership things of how you actually can really help improve everything that you're doing by seeing the people who are really doing the work that you are asking them to do, seeing what their gifts are and not assuming their point of view and not assuming what they what they are, but actually the curiosity of asking and and understanding how they can contribute before just kind of a signing off thing. So looking at, at understanding and stepping and also, you know, creating better workspaces for people by understanding where they're coming from and how they can contribute better. Perfect. And how can people reach out and get in touch with you? What's the best way for them to learn information if they see a fit for this for themselves or someone they right. know? I have a website called pointsofviewconsultancy.com. You can get to it by either writing that out or being lazier like I am and write povconsultancy.com. Um, it has information about the, uh, the uh, workshops I do. It also has uh, information about me as a writer and an actor um, showing kind of the background of what I'm calling on to teach these, this particular, um, using it for empathy. So it has the background of writing and acting and uh, these classes. Um, also, my, my uh, email address directly is Hallie Lorenzato, my name, Hallie Lorenzato at gmail.com, if anybody wants to get hold of me. I'm trying to type that as you're saying it. Thank you. Hallie Lorenzato at what? Gmail. Gmail. Thank you for doing and, and that. POVconsultancy.com. Yeah. There we go. Oh, see, see, I should have known CJ would be on the phone. Thank you, CJ. Well, thank you for thank this. You. I, Always interesting, and I learned more today than in some of our past conversations. So I sure appreciate Great. that. Great. Heading you. back to wrap up, and thank you for that red card at one point, uh, Barbara, because I do yeah, thank you, Barbara. time when I get caught up in things. Our next one today, obviously, is the August 11th, but our next power launch, I'm really excited about this one. It's going to be very different. I'm hoping we'll get a good turnout for it. Michael Levine is going to be talking about his memories of being at Stonewall. I've never actually met someone who was there before. So there he is in 69 and now in 2021. And he's just going to be talking about what it was like to be around the village in the 60s, right up till that Friday night that was supposed to be like any other and definitely wasn't for him. So it should be an interesting story. And uh, I don't know how I'm going to conduct this interview. It's going to probably be a lot of, so what happened next? So what happened next? We'll see how it goes. But from what I've spoken to him already, it's, it's an interesting perspective and different than others that I've heard on TV about Stonewall. His experience was a little bit different. Uh, up after that, for once, I know that actually further in advance, October 11th, 11th, 13th, that's a typo. October 13th, we have Margot Garcia talking about her new program, Busy is the New Lazy. And I heard her on another program talking about this and nailed me. So uh, I knew I needed to bring her to the Power Lunch. So we're looking forward to hearing that program as well. Um, I'm going to skip past the testimonials from other people around here today, but I could always say great things about Dorian if I wanted to, because... Man, that guy knows insurance. Uh, follow us, please. Uh, there is our Facebook page. It's just the name of the organization after the slash. Our LinkedIn name is really hard to remember, so I created this tiny URL page, tinyurl.com slash LinkedIn. Uh, you can always find out more at the Power Lunch's website page, which is power-lunch.com. I try to keep that one up to date. Uh, including past episodes. So you can see some of the people who've had a LinkedIn expert and a time management expert 
and uh, the, the president of the California State Senate. So past episodes are always there. Hallie's episode, if you want to share it with anyone, should be up by tomorrow if all goes well. Uh, there's some of the ones I should have been showing of some of the past episodes right over there. Uh, distribution list. If you're not getting our stuff and you want to, you do not have to be a member to see the stuff that we're putting out there. Something you could come to as a guest, something you could pay a little extra to come as a guest. Maybe it'll make you want to join in the long run. So you can join on our toolbar. Just go to join SDEBA, uh, right, join SDEBA and show, sign up there. Our membership chair, and I think incoming vice president, if I recall, uh, Dorian would want to know that you're interested in membership and tell you more about how to become an official member. Uh, I'm trying to remind you here, I always have that other slide there, that if somebody said something to you or anyone said anything over in the chat area, go over to those three dots and click the save the chat. It's going to throw it into a file in your Zoom folder with the name at the bottom, and that way you'll always have that information. It's the last thing I always have to remember to do. Uh, our thank you of the month goes to the people who were at the Stonewall riots and started creating so much that we would not be having a meeting amongst this group today without them taking their chances on saying enough is enough and starting a whole new world for everyone. Our final thought of the day comes from Barack Obama. It says, learning and to stand in someone else's shoes, see how they see through their eyes, that's how peace begins. And it's up to you to make that happen. Empathy is a quality of character that can change the world. So Hallie, you're in good company with Barack Obama, apparently. Yeah. For this month's meeting. Thank you. If you have any uh, comments you want to make to the organization, send them to info at sddba.org. It still doesn't come natural, sdeba.org, uh, or to me directly, milo at miloshapiro.com will forward to my main email without me having to spell the really long, clunky main email that I use. And that's all, folks. So we're finishing at just a couple of minutes early. For those of you who need to get going, thank you for being with us. But Hallie did say she would linger for a little bit of Q&A. That is the end. Yes, that is just double checking that that is the end. So if you need to take off, thanks for being with us. But if you want to linger, and ask Callie some questions or just hear what questions people have. Barbara, are you trying to say something? Nope. <laughs> okay. There was a lot of charades for no sound. Uh, <laughs> with this, I'll officially close it. We can turn off the, the recording and we will see you next month to hear from Michael about his experience on uh, uh, having been at Stonewall. So let's get a big wave to end our everybody. And we'll see you at the September meeting. Thank you, Holly. Okay. Anyone have questions for Holly now? Yeah, you're welcome. Doesn't always happen.